I am Ma'am PC at kung nandito ka para matuto ay huwag kalimutang pindutin ang subscribe at ang notification bell para lagi kang updated sa aking mga videos. Mwa! 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 Nandito na tayo sa part 2 ng vertical analysis wherein ang i-analyze naman natin ay income statement. For the income statement, again, ang vertical analysis ay also known as common size analysis. But for the income statement, we measure the portion of each account from the net sales. So ang basis naman natin ng 100 dito ay si net sales. Halimbawa, kung ang buong bilog na to ang nagre-represent sa net sales na 100% at ang mga account na ito ang bumubuo sa net sales, the question is, ilang percent ng net sales ang cost of sales? Then, ilang percent ng net sales ang operating expenses? Pangatlo, ilang percent ng net sales ang other expenses? At pangapat, ilang percent ng net sales ang net income? After nating ma-determine kung ilang percent sila, The second question is, uh, if the cost of sales has the highest percentage, kung nirank natin yung mga percentage nila at pinakamalaki si cost of sales, what does it implies? Anong ibig sabihin nun? And what will you do? Ano ang gagawin natin kapag ganun ang nangyari? Same thing with operating expenses. Kung siya naman ang may pinakamataas na percentage, ano ang ibig sabihin nun? And what will you do? Same thing with other expense, kapag siya ang may pinakamalaking percentage, what well, does it implies and what will you do? And also, just the same thing for net income, kung siya ang may pinakamalaking percentage, what does it implies and what will you do? So, the vertical analysis will answer those questions later on, pag natapos natin yung example. So, let's take Fidel Merchandising Income Statement again as of December 31. Kung mapapansin nyo, ito lang din yung mga data sa horizontal analysis. Kung hindi nyo pa rin mapanood, panoorin nyo na na sa channel ko lang. So, nandiyan yung uh, net sales, cost of goods sold, gross profit, selling and administrative expenses, operating income, interest expense, Income before income taxes, income tax expense, and net income. So, ang basis natin dito ng 100 ay si net sales. Now, kapag kinuha natin yung percent ng cost of goods sold, what we're going to do is the following. Of the 2017 net sales, what percent is cost of goods sold? So, ang formula is cost of goods sold divided by net sales times 100. So, kung naman na natin yung value ng cost of goods sold for the 2017, kasi we're talking about the net sales of 2017. So, ayun, 1,032.1 million. And then, i-divide natin siya sa value ng net sales. At kapag tinipe natin yan sa calculator, ay ganito po siya. Tadaan! 1,032.1 divided by 2,213.3 times 100. And we will get 46.6%. So, lalagay na natin sa tapat ng cost of goods sold, 46.6%. For the next account, of the 2017 net sales, What percent is gross profit? So, papalitan lang natin yung cost of goods sold kanina ng gross profit divided by net sales times 100. So, ayun yung value ng gross profit, 1,181.2 divided by 2,213.3 times 100. And we will get, try nyo nga muna sa calcu nyo. Okay, we will get 53.4%. So, lagay natin. Sa tapat ng gross profit, 53.4. And ganun lang din yung gagawin natin sa mga susunod pa na accounts. So, pagpatuloy lang natin, we will get 40.2% for the selling and administrative expenses. For the operating income, 13.2. Interest expense is 4.1. Income before income taxes is 9.1. Income tax expense is 2.7. And lastly, net income is 6.4. Now, let's proceed to the 
Question is, of the 2016 net sales, what percent is cost of goods sold? Ganun lang din yung gagawin natin katulad kay 2017. So, first, kuhanin muna natin yung value ng cost of goods sold divided by the value of the net sales. So, pag tinipe natin sa calculator, 831.8 divided by 1738.7 times 100. And we will get 47.8%. At yun yung ilalagay natin sa tapat ng cost of goods sold percent 2016. Next is of the 2016 net sales, what percent is gross profit? So, kukuhanin muna natin yung gross profit ng 2016 which is 906.9. Divided by the value of the net sales na 1,738.7 times 100. And we will get 52.2%. Right, 52.2%. And ganun lang din yung gagawin natin sa mga susunod pang accounts. For the selling and administrative expenses, we have 37.9. Operating income, we have 14.2. Interest expense, we have 1.8. Income, before income taxes, we have 12.5. Income tax expense, 3.7. And lastly, net income for 2016 is 8.7% of the net sales. Now, sa pag-analyze uh, and interpret of the data, we have two guide, guide questions. So, keep in mind na yung guide question na to ay ginawa ko lang para meron tayong example. Pag kayo ay nasa real field na, hindi nyo ililimitahan yung sarili nyo sa guide questions na ibibigay ko. Ibig sabihin, it's your choice kayong gagawa ng sarili nyong question. Depende sa pangangailangan ng company. So, for my guide question number one, which expense account took most portion of the net sales in 2016 and in 2017? So, alin daw yung may pinakamalaking percentage sa 2016? And take note, dapat expense account. So, meron tayo dito mga expense account. First one is cost of goods sold. Then, selling and administrative expense. Interest expense. Income tax expense. Now, sa apat na yan, sa column ng 2016 percentage, alin ang may pinaka malaking portion or percent? So, mapapansin natin na ito ay ang cost of goods sold. So, lagyan natin siya ng analysis. In 2016, cost of goods sold took most portion of the net sales in 2016 with 47.8%. Now, sa 2017 naman, so kung mapapansin nyo, cost of goods sold pa rin. So, ligyan natin ng analysis. And also, in 2017, with 46.6%. So, mapapansin natin na both 2016 and 2017 ang may pinakamalaking portion ay ang cost of goods sold. Ibig sabihin, most part ng net sales or yung benta ng business, ito ay binabayad sa cost of goods sold or halaga ng mga paninda. And then, lagyan natin siya ng conclusion. So, my conclusion for this is, the business has no new cost reduction measure. Kasi kung mapapansin nyo, yung cost of goods sold ay siya na yung pinakamataas ng 2016, siya pa rin yung pinakamataas ng 2017. That's why, nasabi ko na walang uh, new cost reduction measure. Ibig sabihin nun, walang ginawang action or kung may ginawa mang action ang business ay hindi siya naging effective sa pagbabawas ng cost of goods sold. Wherein, doon tayo kukuha ng recommendation. Kung walang naging action or hindi naging effective yung naging action ng business to have a new cost reduction measure, we may recommend that they should take into consideration the new cost reduction measure to improve the net income of the business. Dahil keep in mind na kapag bumaba ang expenses ng business ay tataas ang income. Kasi hindi nakakainin ng expenses yung mga cash na para sa income. Right? Guide question number two. Is the change in the percentage of net income favorable or unfavorable? So, dalawa lang ang choices. Favorable ba or hindi favorable? And may note dito, if unfavorable, find out which expense account brought significant decline on the net income. So, ang tanong lang dyan, maganda daw ba or hindi maganda ang naging net income? 
para sa analysis natin na to. To find out kung favorable or not favorable, ito yung magiging basis natin. So, dapat kapag daw yung net income for the year 2017, we subtract it from the net income ng 2016, ay mag-equal siya sa increase or positive para maging favorable. However, kapag ang um, difference niya ay negative or decrease, it is unfavorable. So, let's try. So, for the year 2017, ang ating net income ay 6.4. For the year 2016 ay 8.7. So kapag pinag-subtract natin sila, ang makukuha ay negative 2.4%. So kapag negative or decrease, that is unfavorable. No? Muntik ng sumut yung bilog ko. Sorry na. Okay, kung unfavorable yan, sabi sa note, find out which expense account brought significant decline on net income. So, lagyan mo na natin ang analysis bago natin hanapin yung nagpabagsak sa net income. Analysis. The net income of the business was 8.7% of the net sales in 2016. Correct? However, it decreased to 6.4% in 2017. Now, anong expense account ang nagbigay ng significant decline or pagbaba ng net income? To find out, Babalik tayo sa apat nating expenses at kukuhanin natin yung mga differences nila from 2016 to 2017. Ang may pinakamataas na difference, siya ang may sala. For the cost of goods sold, we have 47.8 and 46.6. So ang gagawin lang natin dyan, 46.6 minus 47.8 and that's equals to negative 1.2. For the selling and administrative expenses, Type nyo lang sa calcu nyo, 40.2 minus 37.9, we have 2.2 difference. For the interest expense, 4.1 minus 1.8, we will get 2.4 difference. For the income expense, we, we have 2.7 minus 3.7, we will get negative 1 difference. So, tuon sa abot na yan, alin ang may pinakamalaking difference? So, correct. That's 2.4, the interest expense. So, lagyan natin ng conclusion. The decrease in the net income was due to the significant increase in interest expense of the business. Ibig sabihin, bumaba daw ang net income dahil nagkaroon ng significant increase. Tumaas ang interest expense ng business. Siyempre, kapag may problema, magbibigay tayo ng recommendation. For the recommendation, this is for me, the business must watch over its liability. Kailangan ay bantayan niyang mabuti yung mga utang niya and pay early to lessen the interest. Di ba kapag nagbabayad ng maaga ay nababawasan yung interest at hindi na lumalaki pa? So that's my recommendation. Ikaw, anong recommendation mo? Comment mo naman sa chat box or sa comment box na video ko. Yun lamang at sana'y magkita-kita tayo sa part 1 ng video kung hindi nyo pa siya napapanood. But kung napanood nyo na lahat ay maraming maraming salamat. Special thanks to Lance Mendoza for editing my video and for my students in uh, uni the university where I am teaching and sa mga students sa other university. Yun lamang po. God bless everyone. Have a nice day.